Have you ever wondered how to find the perfect partner? If you have, then no need to fear because math is here to save the day. Now, I know what you're thinking. Math can't be used to predict love. Love is complex and confusing and incalculable. However, just like most things in this universe, there are patterns in love which we can take advantage of as mathematicians to create some very accurate predictions. In this video, I will describe the optimum mathematical strategy that you can use to maximize your chances of finding the perfect partner. I will also demonstrate how we can use mathematics to accurately determine whether a couple will remain together for many years to come or if the relationship will end in a nasty breakup. We need to define some ground rules in which our predictions will be based on. Our first rule is that if an individual moves on from one partner to another partner, they are not allowed to change their mind and go back. Our second rule is that once an individual picks a partner to settle down with, they are not allowed to look into the future to see who they possibly could have met. So with these rules defined, what do you think is the best way to optimize your chances of finding the best possible partner? Well, it turns out that the best method comes from an intriguing theory known as the optimal stopping theory. The optimal stopping theory was initially created to predict the best time to buy and sell stocks, which it did so very well. However, the optimal stopping theory also works very well in predicting when a person should move on from a relationship or settle into a relationship and marry. In order to understand this theory, let's imagine you start dating when you're 15 and at the latest you would like to be married at 35. The question now becomes, at what point should you cash in and marry an individual? If you marry too early, then you may miss out on a better partner. And if you choose to move on from a good partner to find a better one, then you may not find a better one. What the optimal stopping theory says is that you should not marry for the first 37% of your dating span. We call this phase the rejection phase. After this phase, you should marry the first individual who is better than the best individual that you met during your rejection phase. There are, however, two ways that this method could go wrong. The first occurs if you meet your best possible partner during the rejection phase. If this were to occur, you'd have to break up with this individual and you would not get to settle down and marry because you would not date any individuals that were better. The second problem occurs if the people that you date in your rejection phase are low quality partners and then the first person who is better than these individuals after the rejection phase is only marginally better. As a result, you'd have to marry this individual. This method of mate selection is actually used by a species of fish known as tropical guppies. And aspects of this method can be seen throughout the animal kingdom for mate selection, habitat selection, food selection, and lots more. Now that you know how to find the best possible partner, let's use mathematics to predict whether a couple will remain together or break up. To figure this out, we use two equations known as the love equations. The love equations are used to determine how a wife or husband will react after a given action within a conversation. This information can then be used to calculate whether or not a couple will break up or remain together with an approximate 90% accuracy. These equations might look like gibberish at first, but they're actually describing a very simple set of rules. For predicting how positive or negative we can expect the husband and wife to be in the next turn of their conversation. If we take the top line, the wife's equation, we can break down how these equations work. The left hand side of the equation is simply how positive or negative the wife will be in the next thing she says. Her reaction will depend on her mood in general, W, her mood when she's with her husband, RWWT, and crucially, the influence that her husband's actions will have on her, I-H-W-H-T. The equation for the husband follows the same pattern. The values that we plug into these variables are determined by a mathematical system. For example, to enumerate W-T, when the wife expresses emotions like joy, humor, and affection, 
plus 4 is substituted into this variable. However, if the wife expresses emotions like anger, whining, or sadness, minus 1 is then substituted into this variable. However, the most interesting variable in this equation is the influence variable, which includes the notation of WT or HT in parentheses to communicate that the influence that an individual has is determined by their current action. By plotting this variable on a graph against the individual's current action, we can find a very interesting relationship that allows us to predict whether a couple will remain together or not. For example, we could plot the husband's influence on his wife against the husband's current action. If the husband does something good, he is likely to produce a positive influence on his wife. And if he does something bad, he is likely to produce a negative influence on his wife. What mathematicians found was that the influence remains fairly constant for all actions up to a certain threshold. At this threshold, the magnitude of influence increases significantly. We call these thresholds the positivity and negativity thresholds. What we are interested in, however, is just the negativity threshold. Mathematicians found that the individuals are most likely to remain together when this negativity threshold is low. What this means is that the worst relationships are the ones with individuals that let things go and don't say anything when their partner is doing something they don't like. So, by simply using mathematics, I have shown you the optimal way to maximize your chances of finding and remaining with the best possible partner that you meet in your life. It is important to remember, however, that math cannot fully encapsulate every variable of love and therefore can only make predictions. When these mathematical methods, however, are combined with well thought out, unbiased reasoning, that is when your chances of finding and maintaining love skyrocket.